വീഡിയോ റണ് ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ടോ നോക്കണേ റണ് ചെയ്യുന്നില്ല എന്ന് എനിക്കൊരു സംശയം ഹായ് എവറി വൺ കെൻ യു കൺഫേം ഇഫ് ഐ എം ഓഡിബിൾ ഹലോ ഗുഡ് ഈവനിങ് എവറി വൺ ഗുഡ് ഈവനിങ് ഗുഡ് ഈവനിങ് ഹായ് പ്രീതി നൈസ് ടു സി യു ബാക്ക് വെൽ ഐ ഹോപ്പ് വി ആർ സോറി ദ വാസ് എ ബിറ്റ് ഓഫ് ഡിലേ വി ഹാഡ് എ ബിറ്റ് of technical glitch and we just dealt with it hopefully all the bit oh yes all right thank you thank you for the confirmation preeti well uh i hope uh, we will uh, start the session now anyway uh uh all right so we today we'll be looking into idioms and uh, this is the 45th lecture and 44 will be the, we are uh, just meddling with the numbers a bit because 44 will be our uh, 44th session will be on a continuation of the previous topic that krishi sir was covering all right now uh quickly about the college i work in and it is one of the oldest colleges in india established in 1882 and right now it has been raised to a university status this year and uh, one of the wonderful things about the college is there's a lot of focus on teaching and pedagogy and unlike most colleges i have seen that they give a lot of focus on classroom teaching as in classroom teaching comes as the priority than any other activity so and you also get a lot of young and vibrant faculty and there is a bit of statistics about our college and if you are interested check out sjc.edu.in and uh, right now st joseph's college has been raised to st joseph's university there are 19 pg courses and uh, faculty to student to faculty ratio is 24 is to 1 that's something that i believe uh, is magical about the college all right now going forward where we stopped last time i started the session with the note that it's never about understanding the solution when you see a question when you are training when you are practicing on questions we should be understanding we should be spending time to understand the question that is what should i focus on what should i ignore what kind of facts should i build and last time it was vocabulary this time what else this time we should we'll be looking at idioms yes uh, pooja it's not kochin uh, we are in we are both of us are here in bangalore krishi is krishi sir is also right here next to me good evening everyone good evening yeah all right now let's start off our today's session by going back to where we stopped where we stopped is as i told you we were looking at vocabulary and we familiarize ourselves with three not three four different words four of them three of them are there on screen every word has a synonym antonym opposite of the word homonym many words have a homonym homonym is same spelling different meaning and that same day krishi sir spoke about homophones similar sounding words and different meaning all right so synonym antonym homonym and homophones well if english language was that easy that is if it was just synonym antonym homonym and homophones it would have been much easier to learn the language but then we have some other tricky phrases or idioms that is some words 
which may not directly mean the same, but it has some other meaning when you read them together. We are going to look at some questions which came in gate in lines of that. Yes. So I am just, uh, Muskar, I am just quickly running through the topics that we did earlier so that we have a good start for today's session. Now, some words which popped up were lightning, lightening, oasis, anticipation, nostalgia, gladiator, arena, whitening, some words that stood out in the previous session. Now, before I start, is there anyone here who knows this guy? Of course, it's a black and white picture, all pixelated, so it should be a very old guy. Is there anyone here who knows this man? Who could this be? Well, he happens to be a philosopher, a French philosopher. And, uh, oh, there is some, Kripa says she's familiar with this man. Uh, good, wonderful. Now, he happened to be a French philosopher. He seems to have something to do with what we are going to do today. So with that small introduction, I'm going to start the first question. Now, if you notice, on top of the screen, there is a small timer. And when I say I'm going to start the timer, that black bar will start disappearing bit by bit. So I, you can watch out for the timer. I've set the timer to be one minute for each question. I'm hoping that on an average, one minute is more than enough for us to answer these questions. Uh, less than one minute, actually. All right. Now, the first question is, it is a common criticism that most of the academicians live in their dash. So they are not aware of the real life challenges. Well, the options are homes, ivory towers, glass places, and big flats. Put in your choice in the chat box. I'm going to start the timer. This is a question from gate 2020. If you notice the black bars fading bit by bit and once it completely fades your time's up quickly use the chat box put it register your thoughts let's give it a shot and it's perfectly fine to be wrong but be brave to attempt never give up be brave to attempt be brave to make a mistake especially when you're preparing because mistakes sometimes teach teaches us more than what the correct answer teaches us and in fact i teach mathematics for a living and uh, i will always say examples teach us a lot of things but counter examples are the ones which teach the most all right everyone is very confident about b ivory tower well the timer has run out so let's start so in fact homes Big flats doesn't make sense, right? Academicians live in their homes or big flats. No, that can't be a generalized sentence. Glass palaces. Glass palaces is another phrase, but not exactly in this uh, in this uh, context. In this context, the right word is ivory towers. Ivory towers is a usage, in fact, brought to use by uh, popularized by, in fact, coined by someone named Henry Frederick Amiel. Puja, did you mean this person? Did you, when I asked you earlier if you know, did you mean, uh, did you identify to be this person? Not Puja, sorry, Kripa. Yes. So he's the one who coined the term. Ivory Towers means, you know a tower, right? Usually in uh, Disney stories and everything, a tower is where they usually lock up someone precious and then you go rescue them. It's very hard to reach the tower and it's very hard for those who are living in the tower to reach the outside, realize what is happening in the outside world. To be in the ivory tower means you're isolated from the reality. If you remember the question earlier, it says, so they are not aware of real life challenges. Academicians often close themselves up to they close themselves up to 
their studies, their subject that they at times they at times disconnect themselves from real life challenges. All right, uh, Pooja just pointed out that this was done last time. Which session was it done? Uh, was idioms covered in any one of the sessions? I was told that it is not. All right. Now I'll wait for Pooja's response. The there is a small delay between the video and the video streaming, so I'll just wait for the response. Meanwhile, uh, the same person said, "Life is short, and we never have enough time for hearts of those who travel the way with us." Oh, be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and it is very enlightening and just the opposite of what most of us are told in our different institutions right it's all about success and running to be a successful man that we have all around us and uh, uh, this is uh, something to be think about something we should think about as i started teaching as well often i was told okay it's all about finishing the syllabus but then i realized no it's not it's about mentoring it's about growing together with the students i didn't say help students grow no growing together with the students so it's about be swift to love and make haste to be kind he's a french philosopher you can look into it he has said many great things yes uh, muskan uh, yeah i think he might have covered it in the unacademy uh, sessions and uh, this since is a different platform and live session we are going to run through most of this question most probably some questions may be repeated I hope I can add some extra information to what sir has taught earlier. All right. Now, next question says, he is known for his unscrupulous ways. He always sheds dash tears to deceive people. Options are fox, crocodiles, crocodile and fox. Well, Uh, Pooja, no, I last session I completely focused on analogy and uh, not in idioms. Idioms, these are the questions. The, I didn't cover any part of idioms in last session. Yes, go ahead. Put your options in the chat. I'm starting the timer. All right. There is a lot of words for C and there is Prince has quickly voted for B. Sorry, I think there's a small, okay, I'm, uh, there was a small uh, technical glitch. The PowerPoint froze for a second. Anyway, I hope the timer is done. I'm just quickly running through the timer. Well, most of you have voted for C and the answer is correct. But the question is, crocodiles and crocodile. Look at the how they are tricking you the crocodiles or crocodile tears. Now, crocodile's tears doesn't make sense. Crocodile tear is the right answer. And in fact, there is a reason why this idiom came into being. Anyone, does anyone know where this idiom's origins are from? Any guesses? This is a gate 2020 question. Anyone know where this idiom came from? Most probably you would have for sure heard it when you were a ch child. I think there is a small delay. Uh, 
Am I audible? Can you confirm? Hello? If you can confirm if I'm audible, I would... Uh, All right, yeah, thank you, thank you. There was, uh, I was not sure there would be a bit of silence in between. Anyway, uh, the story actually is where this term came is from Aesop's Fables. Many of you might have heard it or read it when you were children. Now, Aesop's Fables is a famous collection of short stories which we most of us grew listening to sometimes they don't say that it's aesop's fable it just uh, they would simply say uh, they would tell you the story you would definitely know the story so what happens is outside a village there was a cro crocodile near the village and what would what happens to the cro crocodile is most of the days he would sit there he'll act as if he's crying he'll have shed fake tears so that people will come to help him and one day he was crying and acting it out when a boy saw him cry. And the uh, crocodile said, oh, there's a bond stuck in my throat. Unless you help me, I'll die. And the boy was like, oh, no. Boy was very kind and tried to save, help the crocodile. And what happened is, at the end of the day, the boy, the crocodile, when boy gets close enough, crocodile jumps and eats the boy. So that's what the story is about and uh, I don't know how it is uh, happening but unfortunately most of our children's stories or fables they are very dramatic when it comes to the ending right in this case the boy is being eaten by the crocodile but uh, still somehow we amuse our children with those stories that remains a mystery but look at the story and where this idiom came into usage Crocodile's tears, fake tears that makes, that deceives us. And in fact, if you log, go back to the question and see, he is known for his unscrupulous ways. He always sheds dash tears, that is crocodile tears to deceive people. All right. Now, going forward, sometimes the stories not just tell us not just teachers the stories helps us also to remember words that we are words or idioms and usages that we are not too familiar with next time you if you are not aware of crocodile tears next time think about the story oh the story of crocodile tears what was happening in the story that helps you remember the idiom in context all right next question he turned a deaf ear to my request. What does the underlined phrasal verb mean? A. Ignored. B. Appreciated. C. Twisted. D. Returned. I am starting the timer. All right, everyone is confident about option A. That's wonderful. Well, the timer is running out. Even if you haven't tried, it's okay if I've started discussing the answer. Even if you haven't tried, go ahead. Quickly mention your answer. Even if we are discussing the answers. Now, he turned a deaf ear to my request. Now, turned, deaf ear, turned a deaf ear. If you just take the word and its meanings, the entire 
usage doesn't make any sense turn the deaf ear but together they have a different meaning and in fact as all of you suggested it means ignored turn the deaf ear that means uh, in a way it is talking about say if you turn a deaf ear and try to listen with your deaf ear what happens you won't be able to listen so you it essentially means you ignored the request the person ignored the request and all of you were co were confident and right in choosing option a well going forward this is a gate 2016 question and uh, i let me show you the slide and let me see if, how many of you can understand what this joke is about uh, someone said turn a deaf ear to your critics it looks almost like an inspirational quote uh, those who got this joke, can you give a hand raise? Turn a deaf ear to your critics. Just look at Beethoven. Everyone told him he would never be a musician just because he was deaf. But did he listen? Let me see how many of you got this joke. Well, and in fact, it is said that he had, from birth, he had difficulty listening. And eventually, uh, he did, uh, he did lose his listening uh, ears completely. He turned completely deaf. But even then, he is one of the greatest composers who ever lived, even till date. That's one of the beauty, right? Your critics can say anything but turns out you turns out your uh, turns out it's about your skills it's about who you are and long as we identify who we are we are in the right path and we identify our right skills and our passion and follow our passion all right now next question Fill in the blanks with the correct idiom or phrase. That boy from the town was a dash in the sleepy village. Options are a dog out of herd, sheep from the heap, fish out of water, bird from the flock. It is a gate 2015 question. Give a shot. Put your thoughts in the chat box. I am starting the timer. Well, this is interesting. We have a uh, mixed response. C, D, and not sure if it's D or C. That's interesting. Yes. Let's see. Let's wait for others to contribute their thoughts. Preeti says C. Arju says C. Omkar is also voting for C. Muskan and Shika. Not sure if it's C or D. It's D. Interesting. Let's see. And uh, if you are, the timer has run out, uh, put in your thoughts. Why do you think that is the right answer? Whichever you picked. Well, um, now a dog out of herd is almost like dog is out of its herd. And it's it should be a bit in, uncomfortable because together they are much stronger. But alone it may be a bit uncomfortable. Sheep out of heap, again, heap of sheep. And a sheep out of the heap sounds like just like dog out of herd. It's isolated from its original. Uh, it's, it's isolated from its group. It's bird, out, bird from flock also is in those lines. And in fact, the right idiom here is fish out of water. 
A dog and a sheep uh, or a bird may be a bit uncomfortable out of its flock, but a fish out of water is actually struggling for its survival. It's actually struggling hard to adjust with the surrounding. And hence, the right answer is C, fish out of water. And in fact, look at the uh, idiom here. Idiom doesn't, idiom, if you see the context in which it is used, it doesn't seem to have any connection to the context. Village, a boy from town, how is it connected to fish out of water? But as an idiom, idiom's meaning is, fish out of water means uh, something which is out of its place and therefore uncomfortable. Uncomfortable in the sense, struggling to adjust. Now, in that lines, a boy from the town was finding it very hard to adjust with in the sleepy village. That is what, it, what we mean by saying fish out of water. And in fact, one of the ways you can remove other three uh, other three options is look at the options. It says out of their group. That's not way too uncomfortable as fish out of water. Fish out of water is struggling for its breath, struggling for its survival. That's one way you can think about it to distinguish them. And in fact, fish out of water is a very common usage and a common idiom that you should be familiar with. All right. Now, I'll move on to the next question. Select the alternative meaning of the underlying part of the sentence. The chain snatcher took to their heels when the police party arrived. Well, this is a tricky one, especially if you do not know what this means. Uh, took shelter, option A is took shelter in a thick jungle. Option B is open indiscriminate fire. Option C is took a flight. Option D is unconditionally surrendered. Well, I am guessing that confused what could be the confusion, but I'll wait for your options starting the timer. Thank you, Muskan. There's always uh, the wonderful thing with uh, learning anything is sometimes there's always very interesting stories behind the ideas we are learning. And we grew up listening to stories, right? So to remember things based on the stories is much easier for us than to learn it as a fact. We might remember the stories, especially many of us, even when I was a student, I always love to listen to my teachers telling me stories and therefore stories are a wonderful way to learn, remember and correctly remember the meaning of idioms especially. All right, everyone is voting for C and the timer has run out. In fact, took to their heels is a idiom that means to as most of you guessed or answered, confidently answered, took to flight, to run away, to try to escape. Now, look at the other options. Took shelter in a thick jungle? No. It says already hidden or open indiscriminate fire, attack back. And uh, unconditionally surrender? Not really. It's about trying to escape, trying to run and escape. Well, there is a story behind this idiom as well. It came from another idiom similar to it called Achilles heel. It means Achilles heel is another idiom. Just like, yeah, fleeting, that's true, Preeti. Uh, Achilles heel mean, means a person's weakness or system in which, or system which might cause them to fail. Now, look at the usage example here. They have a team with great stars but a weak defense in their Achilles heel. Read about it. Read about the history of Achilles heel. It talks about the Greek mythology. There was someone named Achilles and his heel. Heel is a part of the body 
and actually for two days I was limping around because I hurt my heel. Well, just like that, Achilles had a little bit of accident when he was young and he, he was always limping because he had a because of the accident to his heels. All right, heels. All right. So this is another idiom that you can familiarize with. Achilles heel. That means your weakness. And here took to their heels means they were trying to flight, trying to fleeting. That is, is trying to escape. In this context, trying to escape from the police. All right. Now. Which of the following, next question, which of the following option is the closest in meaning to the phrase underlined in the sentence below? Well, it says closest in meaning and it's very tricky question. It is fascinating to see life forms cope with varied environmental conditions. The meaning that you have to search for is of the term, the phrase cope with. Options are A, adopt to. B. Adapt to. C. Adept in. D. Accept with. It's a gate 2014 question. And let's, I'll start the timer. Let's see. Now, I again repeat, it's okay to make a mistake. Make a guess. But make a guess. It's perfectly fine when you're preparing to make a mistake. All right. And thing is, eventually you will see that more mistakes you make as time go by, number of mistakes you make will come down infinitely more. And that is the beauty of mistakes. They don't keep happening. As you make mistakes, you keep learning from it and you will see that your the number of mistakes you make comes down eventually over time. Well, Fuzzle, thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot. And Christy and I are trying our best to make sure that we provide much content as possible. Despite our busy schedules, it's not easy for us to get on. And that's why last day you couldn't see any because we both had a long day and we were like not possible at the moment. But we are trying our best to keep our word and take many sessions as possible before you go for exams. All right. Now, the answer all of you have voted for is B. And some of you have thought, Kriba thinks that it could be A. Well, interesting. Now, adopt to, adapt to, adapt in, accept with. The first three options are very similar, right? Only one letter different. Adopt, adapt, adapt. Now, let's look at the context. It is fascinating to see life forms cope with varied environmental conditions. Before coming to the answer, let me quickly show you something else that uh, I think is relevant at the moment. Well, this should give you the exact meaning. You might have heard this, coping with the exam stress. What could it mean? It means trying to adjust with trying to live with kind of trying to adopt adapt to that's a word that we are looking for right exam stress is there it's a reality we need to adapt to it that is we need to learn to manage it and i'm sure that many of us are going through this phase i would at this time i would be very tensed and uh, but the beautiful thing is i remember the days i was preparing for csi at net it was not easy i was very tensed and but the beautiful thing is before exam i just after a few after a moment i just disconnected myself didn't study too much i just relaxed much as possible and a little bit of studies here and there not straining too much that helped me cope with the exam stress and thing is Exam was stressful, the process was stressful, but after the exam, when the results came, it was worth the stress that I went through. So don't give up yet. We are fighting and we are going to fight even harder. And 
don't worry once the exam is over i am sure there will be something beautiful that we learned or achieved through this exam it may not be we can't have realistic unrealistic ideas unrealistic targets we are trying our best and hard work always pays well with this context coping with the extra exam stress means adapting to it in this context let's go back to our question it says which of the following options is closest to the meaning to cope with is similar to adapt to option b adopt to means to make it one song adapt to means to adjust adapt in means it is adequate it is enough it is uh, or we would say he i am he is adept in this topic that is he is good at that topic accept with means to ad it is it means to tolerate more of adapt means to adjust ad accept with also maybe is close enough to accept it uh, adjust with but the thing is is more of i'll tolerate with it in that term so yes as uh, preeti has pointed out it means to adjust to given conditions well muskan muskan says uh, but as i go to be relaxed my mind tells me beta go steady <laughs> yes mind is always uh, times always mind is at work right uh, i don't know if you have seen the comics where brain is talking to the heart and brain is always logical heart is always talking about compassion and kindness so at times you have to balance them out both don't strain too much especially as the exams are going coming nearby relax sometimes relaxing helps us more than <laughs> more than stressful preparation all right now i hope it's clear cope with means to adjust with various in environmental conditions not on or not make it one song cope with means to adjust with varied environmental conditions and that's what b option b stands for and it is given in a positive term therefore option b can be fixed yes <laughs> all right now a small uh kalnan uh, hop strip contrary to what i had just told you i told you that exams is usually we uh, it is always good to slow down before exams if you have been consistently preparing but this kalnan hops uh, strip has been very much true in my case especially because uh, it says that mood to that mood which turns out our learning and uh, creativity like a faucet and it's nothing but last minute panic <laughs> and it has been true in my case at times most of the times last minute panic last few minutes have been more productive than most of few many hours of preparation <laughs> but anyway all each of us work in different ways each of us have our own style of learning our own way of preparation and i am pretty sure that you would have explored quite a lot of your way your style of preparation through this time through these sessions and through this this learning time especially this preparation time is when we reflect quite a lot on how do we learn how to prepare better and all those things and how are which is the best way we learn so i believe this journey of preparing for the exam has prepared you to get to know yourself better and you are ready to face the exam all right going forward again a tricky question well any guesses who it is there is one building right next to him so you may be able to guess who it is if you know this person put it in the chat box our next question has something to do with this person well we will uh, wind up with this one question for today 
because uh, anyway it's already late and uh, one more question especially in uh, I believe most of the questions which came in uh, gate with idioms we have covered already all right the question is in a press meet on the recent scan the minister said the buck stops here what did the minister convey by the statement he wants all the money well he will return the money or option c says he will assume final responsibility or option d says he will resist all inquiries Well, I'm starting the timer. Put in your thoughts in the chat box. Well, option C is flooding in. If, please register your opinion. It's perfectly fine to make a mistake. And as I told you, it's always better to make a mistake especially when you are learning that teaches you way more than correct answers in fact uh, those who are done why does option a and why could option a and b be a bit confusing in this con in this context in the context which is given why could it be a bit confusing can you put your thoughts in the chat box that's because well the word buck stops here buck what could buck what why in what context do we use but the word buck in fact when you go say okay let me Shiga say Shiga is doubtful whether it's option D. Good. So when you would say when you go to the shop and your friend called and asked, uh, how much money did you buy the chocolate for? And you say 10 bucks, right? That's where they are trying to trick you. They use the word buck. So you you may think that okay, it has something to do with money. So it's either option A or B. But as most of you have opted, it is option c he will finally uh, he will assume final responsibility the buck stops here means he to take responsibility the person who is saying it is taking responsibility for whatever he or she is saying or is undergoing now well it doesn't say that he's saying I did it. He's saying whatever is the truth and I'm taking responsibility for it. All right. Now, building looks like Capitol. It's White House and there's a reason why it is White House. It is no one but Truman, Harry Truman, US President. He is the one who popularized this, for, uh, this uh, idiom. The buck stops here. The re there is a history behind how this term came into usage as well. Now, earlier when they used to play poker, they used to use the special knife called knife with a buckhorn handle. They used to use this. So one who had the knife with buckhorn handle used to be the used to be at the commanding position. So nobody else. He is the one who decides about the next round. So that's from where this term this idiom came into this idioms meaning came into being and that's why if you notice the buck stops here doesn't seem to have any connection with taking responsibility but if you dig into the history it says knife with buck on handle which was a symbol of control in the game that they were playing the or the one who had the knife with buck on handle the buck the buck which they used to pass around the one who had it had the responsibility of taking things forward same thing which harry truman used and popularized as the buck stops here well with this question i'll wind up this session i hope all of you 
have learned something new from the session. Those who have attended the other classes, other class uh, by Christy sir, have, I hope you have learned something new. It's already 10.15 and we are sorry for the delayed start. Uh, I'll just end with one small quote and I've taught for almost uh, eight years now and I can proudly say I've taught nearly 1200 students and there's one thing that it, most students are hesitating to believe that's this that they are a little better little more capable than they know you are a little bit capable than you know know that learn to tap that potential in you that you never understood yourself and prepare for the exams well last final days have a good strategy which relaxes you at the same time gets you ready for the exam all right thanks a lot if you have any thoughts if you have any thoughts or questions you can put it in the chat box all the best and hope to see you in one or two a uh, few more sessions in coming days thank you Preeti. we are trying our best the thing is uh, more for us uh, during our time it was way long ago uh, we didn't have much po youtube was not that popular but free materials was not that easy to get either and we are so glad that such opportunities are there such venues are there where material can be provided to you guys so we are trying our best to assure that much as possible is freely available to you guys through our channel well thank you everyone thank you if you have in if there are no other doubts or questions we'll wind up the session right here thanks a lot thanks a lot for being patient coming back despite the small delay i hope the session was useful thank you everyone and good night if you have any thoughts you can always put it in the chat box now until the stream ends otherwise put it in the chat in the comments we would love to address your questions in the comments both of us always keep watching out for it and if there is any query we are we try our best to quickly address it so thank you all have a wonderful night and i hope you have a fruitful preparation day tomorrow good night